Here I've got a nice problem where we're going to derive a closed form for a gnarly looking sum by breaking it down into a couple manageable pieces and then gluing that back together all on the end. So our goal is to evaluate the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 4 to the n times n factorial quantity squared over n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 factorial. We're going to make use of three main tools here, plus one more kind of smaller tool, which I'll leave as homework when we get to it. So the first tool is an identity involving inverse trig functions. So the inverse sine or the arc sine of x is the same thing as the arc tangent of x over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So let's get to proving this identity first. So maybe let's start by setting theta equal to the arc sine of x. That tells us that we know that the sine of theta equals x by the function inverse function relationship. Okay, next up maybe we could write this x as x over 1 just to maybe give a hint towards a completion of a triangle. Now we'll draw a right triangle where we have angle measure theta right here, and that's our right angle. So using the definition of sine as opposite over hypotenuse, we know that the length of this can be taken to be x, and the length of the hypotenuse can be taken to be 1. Then using the Pythagorean theorem, we can complete the measures of the sides of this triangle to get the square root of 1 minus x squared here. But now that we've got this completed triangle, that allows us to find all trig values of this angle theta very, very quickly. For instance, the tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, so that'll be x over the square root of 1 minus x squared. But then again, by the function inverse function relationship, we see that theta is equal to the arctan of x over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, so now let's see what we've got. On the one hand, theta is equal to this arc sine, but on the other hand, this inverse tangent evaluated at x over the square root of 1 minus x squared is also equal to this value theta. So that means this inverse sine object is equal to this inverse tangent object, and we have proven this first little tool. And now we're ready to move on to our next tool, which is a series expansion of arc sine of x over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So in fact, that can be expanded as the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 2n double factorial over 2n plus 1 double factorial times x to the 2n plus 1. So what do I mean by double factorial? Well, this means we've got a descending product starting at 2n, but instead of going to the previous number, we skip one. So this would be like 2n times 2n minus 2 times 2n minus 4, all the way down, stopping at the number 2, because this is an even number. Then 2n plus 1 factorial would be 2n plus 1 times 2n minus 1 times 2n minus 3, all the way down, stopping at 1, because this is an odd number. Okay, so now that we've got that in mind, let's maybe get to work on this tool. So we'll take this arc sine of x over the square root of 1 minus x squared, and we'll apply our first identity to rewrite this inverse sine as an inverse tangent. So this is in fact equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared times our arctan of x over the square root of 1 minus x squared. You might say, well, why did we do that? Well, it's because it's easier to write the inverse tangent as a series than it is the inverse sine. But now I'm going to use a little bit of a trick to rewrite this. I'm going to factor a 1 over x out of the whole thing. But then I can rewrite this as x over the square root of 1 minus x squared arctan of x over the square root of 1 minus x squared, like that. 
that almost looks like the antiderivative of some rational function involving the inverse tangent. And we can bridge the gap so it exactly looks like that by multiplying the interior here by y and then evaluating this from y equals 0 to y equals 1. So notice if we evaluated at y equals 1, we're back to exactly what we had, which simplifies down to this and thus to this, which is our starting point. Evaluating that at y equals 0, we get inverse tangent of 0, which is just 0. So nothing changes there. But now we can use a derivative-antiderivative relationship related to the arctan to rewrite this as 1 over x times the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over 1 minus x squared over x squared plus y squared dy. So just recall that this is generally written as the integral of 1 over a squared plus y squared. Here, the role of a squared is being played by this object right here. So this would be 1 over a, and this would be y over a in the argument of the inverse tangent there. Okay, so now that we've got it written like this, which is maybe the easiest way to see its relation to this inverse tangent function, let's move some things around so it's easier to work with towards generating some sort of series. So I'll start by multiplying the numerator and the denominator here by x squared. That'll cancel out this denominator of the denominator. Furthermore, we can think about this 1 over x as living in the numerator, so there's a little bit of simplification there. So we have this is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x over 1 minus x squared plus x squared y squared dy. And then we'll do one more thing. We'll group this so that the x squared terms are grouped together. And that'll leave us with the integral from 0 to 1 of x over... 1 minus 1 minus y squared times x squared and then dy. But now look at what we've got here. We've got essentially a geometric series inside of the integral. So if you look at this, it looks like 1 over 1 minus u, where the role of u is being played by this 1 minus y squared times x squared. And then this x in the numerator can be thought of as just some sort of constant multiplier. So we use the standard formula for the sum of a geometric series to expand this into a series. So that's going to give us the integral from 0 to 1 of x times the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of 1 minus y squared to the n times x squared to the n, which is the same thing as x to the 2n. And let's recall that this is a y integral, so we have dy outside of the whole thing. Okay, so finally we can take this x multiply it through, and that turns that into x to the 2n plus 1, and that's the version that we'll bring up here. On the last board, we took our inverse sine over 1 minus x squared and got it down to the following form. So it's the integral from 0 to 1 of the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity, 1 minus y squared to the n, x to the 2n plus 1 dy. Now from here, we'll use binomial expansion formula to take this 1 minus y squared to the n and expand it as a finite sum. We know it'll be a finite sum here because n is a non-negative integer. Whenever you expand a binomial to the power of a non-negative integer, you always get a finite sum. Okay, so let's see. That's going to leave us with the integral from 0 to 1. We have this sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity. I'm going to maybe move this x to the 2n plus 1 out front, and then we'll have the sum as m goes from 0 up to n. So we'll have negative 1 to the m, because we've got a minus sign right there. n choose m, that'll be our binomial coefficient, and then finally y to the 2 m because it's y squared inside that binomial. And then let's recall that this is still all within an integral with respect to y. The next thing that we'll do is take that integral with respect to y, but we can just use the power rule there. So that will increase the power by 1 and then divide by the new exponent. 
But then since we're evaluating at one and zero, that really just puts our new exponent in the denominator. So that leaves us with the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of x to the two n plus one. And then next, the sum as m goes from zero up to infinity of minus one to the m, we have our binomial coefficient n choose m, and then this is all over two m plus one. That two m plus one in the denominator came from this integral with respect to y. Okay. So now I'm going to leave you guys with a little bit of a homework exercise, and that is to take all of this stuff which I have boxed in green and show that that equals exactly what we want it to be equal to. So in other words, this is equal to 2n double factorial over 2n plus 1 double factorial. And this can be done fairly easily with induction, where in your induction step, you use the Pascal identity for our binomial co coefficient n choose m. So if you want to sketch the details in the comments, I think that'd be great. Okay, so now putting all of this together, if we make our replacement of this green box with the homework exercise, then we've arrived at the end part for this second tool. And now we're ready to move on to this third tool, which is related to the second tool, just via taking the antiderivative. So let's start with this arc sine of x quantity squared. And notice that we can rewrite that as two times the antiderivative of arc sine of x over the square root of one minus x dx. Okay, so why is that? Well, that's because of the derivative antiderivative relationship of the inverse sine function. So in, the, in other words, arc sine and the function one over the square root of one minus x squared. So via a fairly simple u substitution, we can go from here back to here. But now we can insert the last step into this antiderivative. So this is equal to two, and then we have the antiderivative of the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of two n double factorial over two n plus one double factorial times x to the two n plus one dx. But then we can do term by term antiderivatives using the power rule, pretty similar to what we did before. I'll do that and simultaneously bring this two inside. So that'll leave us with this sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of two times two n double factorial over two n plus two times two n plus one double factorial times x to the two n plus two. So again, I increased the exponent by one and I divided by the new exponent. Now I'm gonna start manipulating this so it starts to look like this tool down here. So the first thing that I'll do is take this two n double factorial and multiply it by another copy of two n double factorial. But so that I don't change anything, if I do that to the numerator, I also have to do that to the denominator. Another thing that I'll do is take this two n plus two, factor a two out, and I'll be left with two n plus one. So clearly this two and this two will cancel, so that's nice. Another thing which is nice is that this 2n plus 1 double factorial and this 2n double factorial will combine to a single factorial. This will combine to 2n plus 1 regular factorial. Why? Well, that's because this product is just the product of all of the odd numbers. This product is the product of all of the even numbers. So if you take the product of those two, then you have the product of all of the numbers. Okay, so let's rewrite this a little bit. Now we have the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of two n double factorial squared over, now it's gonna be n plus one times two n plus one factorial, and then this is x to the two n plus two. Now let's look over what we have here and notice that almost all of the parts are in order, except for the fact that we have a 2n double factorial up here, 
and we have an n factorial here. But that's actually easy to work with. Let's take this 2n double factorial and notice that we can write it as 2n times 2n minus 2 times 2n minus 4 all the way down to 4 times 2. But now we can factor a 2 out of each of these and after factoring a 2 out of each of those we've taken a total of n 2's out. So this factors as 2 to the n and then we'll be left with n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down 2 times 1. Well that's also known as n factorial. But again all of that is being squared so that means we have 2 to the n squared, that's the same thing as 4 to the n, and then we're left with n factorial squared. So in fact, we have finished this last tool. And now we're ready to finish this off. So let's notice that our goal sum is exactly equal to this last thing that we constructed where x is equal to 1. So obviously you have to check that x equals 1 is in the interval of convergence of this power series, but I'll leave that as homework. Okay, so just to reiterate, this is going to be the same thing as the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of 4 to the n times n factorial squared over n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 factorial times x to the 2n plus 2, where we've evaluated x at 1. But let's notice that this power series is exactly the square of the inverse sine function. So this is equal to arc sine of x squared evaluated as x goes to 1. Okay, but then what's arc sine of 1? Well, that's like asking the question, when is sine equal to 1? Well, that's not exactly what it's asking. It's asking when is sine equal to 1 on a certain interval. The arc sine is only defined from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So the answer is pi over 2. So in the end, we get that this is pi over 2 quantity squared or pi squared over 4. And that's a good place to stop.